Hi there, I'm Phil from PicoKit and uh, we're going to be looking at how to hack a robot today using the PicoFlow Alpha software. So first of all the projects that we're going to be doing in this series, we're going to be looking at the uh, traffic light project which is a good soldering project that you can do but of course great because you can plug in the programmer, use our software and program it to work the way you want traffic lights to work. So uh, the second one that we'll be looking at We'll be looking at the dice, so Pico dice, and Pico dice has a nice little display funky thing happening there, and uh, just be looking at how to generate a random number between one and six and get that display on the LEDs in the correct way. And uh, then we'll also be looking at the Pico flash. Pico flash is a high visibility display that you can put on the back of your bicycle. We've also got Pico bright, which is a nice, uh, torch that you can have that you can buy and program so uh, it's pretty cool like if you don't like that flicker pattern you can put it any other way you want so uh, you don't even have to have a flicker pa pattern you can disable that one so uh, also the fifth project we're looking at is the pico roach so um, how to use servo motors and a couple of micro switches on the pico roach is a, a good project to use so so let's get started with the PicoFlow Alpha software and um, I'll be doing one, one of these projects per video. So hope you enjoy. Well this is the Pico Lights model that we were looking at and uh, basically we'll be looking at how to set the LEDs to make them work. And to do that a bit easier I've uh, designed a system diagram that we can use that shows the patterns of the lights and basically the order of which way the light should go and what the time delays are, are between the lights and so all we have to do is use this like a roadmap of how to create it so it even has this little uh, number here B2 H C2 H and H stands for high so we need to turn those two pins to high so let's have a look at the software Pico Flow Alpha uh, if we drag a tool onto the screen um, basically we just have to link it up and we have to put it in a loop so uh, not all tools have to be in an individual loop but one collective loop and we can actually go assembly and program and you'll see that that actually looks like it's erased the traffic lights there well let's double click on the tool to have a look at what's happening so we've got a little diagram here of the microchip this has a, a PIC 16F505, which is a 14 pin device, one for power, one for ground, and 12 inputs and outputs. So uh, basically, um, from that system diagram, we said we had to have B2 had to be high, and C2 had to be high, so we can configure those. In the <laughs> Pico Lights project, a zero will turn off an LED and a one will turn on. So if we have RB2 and RC2 on, then that should give us two LEDs turning on. So let's have a look at that. Assembly code and then program. Okay, we have four LEDs turning on. What's actually happening, if I bring us back to the system diagram, there's, there's four LEDs turning on from two outputs. B2 and C2 are turned on. So what we have is the opposite LEDs are actually hooked up together. So you turn on one of those and it will actually, one of those pins, it'll actually turn on two. So I can show you that. Uh, if we go back into the tool and we turn off our B2, assemble and program, you'll see that these two LEDs are connected together. Okay, and these two LEDs were connected together as well. So I can show you the schematic of that later. Um, but at the moment, let's have a look at putting in some more um, output tools. Of course, when we put in an output tool, uh, this thing's running at a clock of four megahertz. So uh, putting in an output tool without a delay actually will just get confusing so we have to use the delay tool and we might put in two delays for the moment 
and we'll have a look at that. Of course it has to be in a loop, like I said. If you don't put it in a loop, if we just tried to assemble the code there, it would tell us there's a problem with the final tool because it's not hooked up to anything. We could actually just hook it to itself, um, but it would stop on this point. It wouldn't do anything past it. So it's more interesting if we actually uh, hook it up to something else like that. And just to make it a bit neater, I'll line those up. Now, so this one is our C2 is on. Let's put on our B2 on that one. And in our system diagram, if we have a look at the second stage, we have B2 and C0 and we have a C4 test. So we'll have a look at that soon, what that C4 test means. But B2 and C0 is what we want on the second tool. So B2 needs to be on and C0. And if we just compile and run that program, we'll see something happen. Okay, so it's alternating one of those LEDs. <clears throat> Not quite what we want happening but we're not finished yet. So let's go back to the code and the flow chart. And uh, now it told us that we needed to put an input on this one. We don't actually need a second delay there at the moment. We'll replace that with an input tool. Now an input tool actually um, is like a decision. Once it knows whether the button's been pressed or not, if it's pressed, it will go in one direction. If it's not pressed, it will go in another. So the first direction, we say it's not pressed. We actually want it to go back and retest itself. So we'll make the, the top point there a false. Um, so a false. So if the test is false, then it will go to the top and it will run itself again. So false, we want on top. And true, we're going to make that on the right. And also, uh, the pin that we were using, did it say RC4? I think, maybe it was RC5. Let's have a look at that. And of course we can't run that again just yet. We'll move that around. There. Assemble and run and we'll see what happens. Okay, now it's stopping on there. And if we press the buttons, nothing's actually going to happen. Okay, uh, that's because we need to go into the start tool, this little tra traffic light symbol, inputs and outputs, and we need to make RC5 and RC4 um, to a one, which means they're input. So, and we'll just check. Okay, so RC4, is going to be an input and down here RC5 is going to be an input. So we're using at the moment RC5 and I think that's what it said, didn't it? No, RC4, let's change that. And assemble and program. Now it's not going to green which means it's actually getting on green and probably instantly changing again. Let's just press one of these buttons. Okay, so it's the opposite of what we want. So if we go back to that input tool, we've got this set correctly, but we can change to make it a clear test instead of a set test. That basically just alternates uh, the way the switch is working. Should go green and stay there. Now if a car pulls up to red, it will change. But of course we don't want it to change instantly. We want it to change uh, like traffic lights would, going through the orange with a time delay. So we'll put in a time delay. To give us more space, we'll minimize that area up there. Uh, time delay, and then we're going to have a traffic light change. And we want this to go to orange. So get that back up. So for an orange, we want it on B2 and C1. So B2 
C1 should give us that traffic light change and we can also put in another delay <coughs> and then for the moment we'll finish it off and that will go back to red so we'll just uh, arrange those a little bit nicer assembly code program so it goes red time delay down to green car comes on red time delay orange time delay back to red again and then it's going time delay to green so we've done a complete loop there <coughs> and that pretty much gives us what we want for half of the cycle so we have to replicate the cycle um, but we'll do it in the opposite direction so basically anything I have up here I want down here and I'm just going to reverse the cycle back this way so delay output input delay output delay and we'll link all of those up oh, and configure them Okay, so now we have the tools hooked up. Uh, let's configure them a little bit. So we'll look at our roadmap, B2 and C2, and B0, C2, and B1 and C2. And this is a C5 test. So uh, we should be able to get those settings done. So B2, C2. We want this one on, was it uh, C2, B0 and C2 B1 and the input test oh we haven't configured that one yet input test is on C5 and we want false to be on the bottom true to be on the left and we'll make it a clear test and we'll see how that goes assembly code program Okay, this is C4 test and C5 test. There we go. So that's working fairly right. All we have to do is uh, modify the delays to get the timing a little bit better. So if we have a look at the system diagram again, we have a two second, a five second, a two second and repeated. So, so let's put that in on the delay we want a two second a five second and a two second oh, and the same thing of course traffic lights don't change this quickly but it is it is just a model so let's program it okay so now there should be uh, two is that a five second or a two second delay let's have a look okay so that's it's stop position we'll press the button one two three four five and so that's at least that's about five seconds there and then two seconds between changes. So I'll press it again. One, two. Oh, that didn't seem to take five seconds. So there might be something we need to fix there. Let's have a look at the code. That's on five seconds after the switch input. Ah, there it is. So five seconds. Missed that one. Assembly code, program. Oh, okay, now we press it. One, two, three, four, five. There it goes. 
So there you have it. That's programming with Pico Flow Alpha and Hacker Robot today. Go to picokit.com, purchase some products, or uh, check out the possible link below and help us fund. Uh, we need ten thousand dollars to develop a whole lot more tools, make the software refined and more programmable, um, so that you guys can really enjoy programming with Pico Kit products and designing your own products, so you can hack them as well. So um, thanks heaps for watching and have a great day. See ya.